Unity government announced today that it's back in full control of the capital Tripoli as well as its suburbs. That's after more than a year of battling an offensive led by the strongman Khalifa Haftar. Well, the news follows yesterday's announcement that the government forces had retaken control of Tripoli's main airport. Well, fighting in and around the Libyan capital has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of people and forced around 200,000 to flee. Well, Turkish drones and air power offered key support to the UN-backed government. And with that in mind, uh, Libya's Prime Minister Fayez al-Sarraj headed to Ankara today to meet the Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Well, let's get more analysis of these developments. And we can speak now to Ricardo Fabiani, who is the project director for North Africa at the International Crisis Group. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Let me start by just asking you how significant today's news is, in your opinion, uh, that uh, the UN-backed government is in control once again of Tripoli and its suburbs. I mean, obviously, it is extremely relevant. It's a pretty big development, considering that for a whole year, effectively, the Tripoli government was under pressure from the armed groups uh, led by General Haftar. And it looked like, especially towards the end of last year, that Haftar was almost destined or bound to take over uh, the capital and uh, effectively win. Uh, his offensive and uh, win control of the whole country. This changed dramatically with the Turkish intervention. And what happened today, I would say, was a little bit of the, uh, if you like, the last chapter of the story of the past few months, with, which have, that has seen effectively the groups linked to the GNA government and supported by Turkey effectively push back. And we've seen the momentum behind Aftar's offensive gradually shift dramatic and, and eventually shift dramatically towards uh, in favor of the uh, of the Tripoli institutions. OK, we're coming up to about 10 years now since uh, Gaddafi was ousted and killed. It was in 2011. Uh, and ever since then, Libya has been descending into a state of chaos. We've got these two uh, rival administrations, but it's not just them, is it? Just talk us through who the key players are in Libya right now. Well, the key players in Libya have actually changed quite significantly, especially over the past year, year and a half. Uh, I would argue that right now, uh, the probably the two most important influential players, if, especially if we look at uh, the quantity and the, the, the amount of military support that both sides have received, are Turkey supporting the Tripoli government and Russia uh, effectively supporting, even though indirectly and not overtly, the coalition, the military coalition led by Haftar. Then we also have uh, uh, the UAE and Egypt uh, providing, again, backing to uh, General Haftar. And then, again, we have other players that used to play a much more relevant role, much more influential role in the Libyan conflict, uh, and are now uh, less and less relevant, which are effectively the US, France, uh, and Italy. And right now, I think it's possible to argue that uh, it's Turkey and Russia uh, and the UAE and Egypt behind Russia effectively calling the shots and uh, uh, playing the most influential role from uh, outside in the Libyan conflict. They are now positioning for the second phase of uh, the Libyan conflict after the uh, fall of the Arbutia Air Base and the GNA effectively taking over the rest of Tripoli. We just don't know what's going to happen next and what exactly this, these players, these actors are trying to achieve. So what are these uh, developments? We got, well, just to recap, we've got Haftar supported by neighboring Egypt, the UAE and Russia, as you said. Then we've got the UN-backed government uh, supported principally by Turkey, as you said. These two key players, uh, Russia and Turkey. How do those two countries then get along? What are relations like now between Moscow and Ankara in light of these events on the ground thousands of kilometers away in Libya? So this is exactly what uh, we only know to a limited degree. Uh, Turkey and Russia, uh, as everyone knows, always have had this, uh, I would say, complex relationship in the Middle East, particularly for a while now. This obviously applies to Syria, but it also applies in this case uh, to the Libyan context. The two uh, actors, these two countries speak to each other. We know that for a fact. Uh, we know that uh, uh, they have some shared interests and they have, obviously, their adults on other fronts, on other issues. Now, when it comes to Libya, Turkey and Russia are talking. Uh, they, uh, for, for example, organized 
uh, a major diplomatic summit uh, in January, which was a first attempt by these two countries to broker a deal, to broker some form of compromise between the two sides. That deal uh, didn't work out eventually, pr uh, primarily because of the opposition of Haftar, who rejected the compromise put forward particularly by Russia. But we know that basically they have been uh, fighting each other, supporting different coalitions, but at the same time talking behind closed doors at the highest level uh, on Libya. So uh, this is so much as much as we know. What we don't know, obviously, is what kind of conversation is taking place at this moment between these two countries. Okay, so where do you see things heading to from here? Are you optimistic about Libya perhaps turning the page after what's been basically a, a decade of chaos? What is uh, what we know for sure is that there is uh, something happening at the diplomatic level that sees the, co the involvement and the participation of Turkey and Russia uh, with Siraj, uh, you know, visiting Turkey, Haftar and other uh, Libyan players also in, being in touch with Egypt uh, and, and Russia. And Russia and Turkey, most importantly, calling for a ceasefire only uh, a few days ago. And um, in this picture, I would say there seems to be an effort, an attempt by these two countries, by Turkey and Russia in particular, to push for some sort of deal of understanding. But there are many factors involved. There are, as I said, the UAE and Egypt that are also part of this picture. And then there are the Libyan actors, the Libyan parties themselves, which are not the easiest proxies when it comes to external backers trying to control them. So there is a genuine effort, probably, but the outcome of this effort is, I would say, very unclear because there are many... Um, okay, it looks like the uh, line has just frozen there on our... Our guest, that was uh, me speaking to Ricardo Fabiani, the project director for North Africa at the International Crisis Group there. Well, that brings us up to date with the world news.